In the late 1800s, a scientist, commonly known as Lord Rayleigh, was trying to understand why hot objects emit light. Rayleigh knew that the color of the light depended on the temperature, like how the hotter parts of a fire burn blue, whereas the colder parts burn red. But he wanted to know where that color was coming from. During this time, the field of physics had a few perplexing problems yet to be solved, but the general consensus was that with more detailed experiments and more deeper applications of Newtonian mechanics, all of those problems would soon be solved. Little did physicists know that to solve these nagging problems, the entire foundations of physics would need to change. Not only that, but the coming solution would fly in the face of all preconceived notions on how the universe worked. This problem became known as the ultraviolet catastrophe. Without undergoing this massive shift in understanding, many of the technological innovations of the 20th century could not have been possible. We know that when light interacts with an object, it can either be absorbed, emitted, or reflected. Rayleigh considered a model object, which could only absorb and emit light, but could not reflect it. We call this object a black body. This is a model object and does not truly exist in nature, but there are many objects that are close enough. Incandescent light bulbs, hot coals, and stars like our sun are all well modeled as a black body. We call the light that is emitted from these objects black body radiation, and it turns out that the amount of radiation emitted depends only on the temperature of the object. These graphs show the spectrum of the black body radiation, which is the intensity of the light at each different wavelength. All waves have a characteristic wavelength, and in the case of light, that wavelength is directly related to color, so the wavelength axis on these graphs can simply be thought of as color. Lord Rayleigh and his colleague James Jeans considered a black body made up of vibrating particles whose energy was being directly converted into light. They could then use this model to predict how much black body radiation would be emitted by an object at any temperature. Their predictions matched the experimental findings for large wavelengths, but as the wavelengths got smaller, things went very wrong. Their theory predicted that all objects would end up emitting infinite amounts of ultraviolet radiation, regardless of their temperature. This is why the problem became known as the ultraviolet catastrophe. This was not a catastrophe in the real sense of the word, as we all know this is wrong. When you turn on your stove, you don't immediately get a sunburn. But in the scientific sense, this was a big deal. The physicist who solved this problem was Max Planck. Max Planck was a prominent physicist in the late 1800s and early 1900s. And for solving this problem in particular, he was awarded the Nobel Prize in Physics in 1918. So how did Planck solve the ultraviolet catastrophe? In order to explain the distribution of black body radiation, Planck proposed that all light comes in clumps that we now call quanta. The size of a quanta of energy depends on the frequency with this famous equation E equals nhf. Here, E is going to be the size of the clump, the amount of energy of the light that is emitted. H is a constant, like pi, which we now call Planck's constant, which this is the value, and f is the frequency of the vibrating particles. The n shows us that these energy levels are discrete, like rungs on a ladder, as opposed to continuous, as we had previously thought. Planck's idea worked. The spectrums that he predicted matched the experiments very well. His idea may have worked, but he had no idea what this work meant for the real world. See, Planck was just making the math work out, like we all sometimes do when we don't understand our homework. It wasn't until later that Einstein proposed that light wasn't just a wave, but was comprised of particles that we now call photons, that we really understood what this conclusion meant. This conclusion helped pave the way to a better understanding of the atom, and then the weird world that we now know as quantum mechanics. Without the paradigm shift that was brought on by the ultraviolet catastrophe, modern technology like our cell phone, communication grid, GPS, and many more would not have been possible.